right, and while you're standing here having a light, nice little stretch, I would like you to join me in welcoming to the stage Rob Stroud, Principal Analyst for Forrester Research. <laughs> All right. Thank you. It's nice to have a standing ovation. Let's hope you're standing up at the end. That might be the problem, right? It's great to be here. I'm with my people. Operations, folks. Yes, I'm happy. <laughs> Developers are over here. They're not clapping. <laughs> Don't hang out with them later, OK? So I'm working for Forrester. And, I, and you can tell I have this great New York accent, can't you? <laughs> it's wonderful. But the reality of working uh, for Forrester, I get to talk to a lot of organisations. And I've seen a change in the industry this year, a change since January. I can put my finger on it. I get 700 inquiries a year, give or take. And since January, I'm being called by your CIOs, enterprise architects, VPs of application development, and VPs of ops. And they're saying one thing, we have to go faster. Yeah, costs are important, but actually speed to compete is the one thing we care about. And one of the things I love is that we've just done a survey which says that DevOps is absolutely now mainstream. It's crossed the chasm. 87% of organisations told me in our survey earlier this year that they are implementing, implemented or refining their DevOps environment. This is amazing. We have reached a position where people understand that we need to go fast, we need to automate, and we need to drive value. Even further, one of the things we've had with DevOps since 2008, when DevOps really started emerging, is DevOps is really being driven by developers, I'm sorry to say. DevOps velocity was being driven by the development organisation that came out of Agile, and you all know this, but the reality is, I'm really happy to tell you, in this year's survey, I can tell you that operations are finally leading DevOps initiatives, with 69% of you surveyed telling us you are implementing processes that look like or were DevOps. Now, each year, we produce a heat map and say, where is the velocity? Where is the momentum? And I can tell you it's not happening in government, but it is happening everywhere else. Financial services, for instance, is amazing. With the fintechs and the insurance techs coming, we are seeing this huge interest and support in DevOps now. Now, as you can tell on this wonderful heat map where brown is hot, I don't know how that happened, but anyway. But uh, you can see that financial services, for instance, is really driving DevOps forward, and telcos and communication companies and services companies are driving DevOps forward as they change and transition their business model for velocity. But fundamentally, if you look at what's also happening, DevOps is happening because it's driving the velocity in the new ways we deliver products and services. Now, I remember the good old days of banking, and it was fun when you went into a bank branch and you saw a human being. Now, they were great days. Right, you could, you, you, bank was open like nine to three, Monday through Friday, and if you're really lucky, it would open to four o'clock on uh, Friday. Don't you ask a bank to open on Saturday? No way known. But today, you can bank any time you want, anywhere you want, any how you want, and it's been driven by technology. Smartphones, tablets, Internet of Things. I just got a new car, and in my new car, the Internet of Things is live and active. And sometimes it makes up its own mind what it wants to do. <laughs> Which doesn't help me. But the reality of this is if you look at what you're doing in your roles every day, you are supporting these rapidly changing, these fast-paced applications, and they're smaller and neater, and they change more often. But we have one fundamental issue, which I know everyone in view in this room has solved, and that is that you know that less than 40% of organisations actually promote change to production faster than quarterly. That is a huge problem in the industry today. It is one of the things that is challenging the DevOps movement. 
It's one of the things that's ch challenging velocity. And I think one of the things we need to focus on is how do we actually get change transitioned into production on a much more rigorous basis with more velocity and more cap uh, accountability. Because one of the fundamental things I see that's the, that is, needs to be resolved is that we have these things called silos of, ch of uh, velocity, oh, sorry, silos of automation. And these silos of automation are fundamentally changing the way we go about doing business. Now, if you can imagine this for a minute, so we're in development and we've actually coded a change and we push it across to testing and we push it across to QA and we push it across to staging and then of course operations says, oh, we've got to rebuild everything. We can't, we can't take what you did. We don't trust you. You've heard that before, right? I hear this every day. And then you look at that and each of these silos are very nicely and nicely automated. Only 29% of you have automated that whole end-to-end -end process. And one of the themes of this event is continuous automation. And let me encourage you that we need to look at continuous automation because it's, it's really killing quality and velocity. So if you look at this standard map here of change, now yes, I know there are a lot more steps. One of the things I see often is there significant challenges or, for you, opportunities in the whole pipeline. The first thing is really simple. Things like delivering automated test environments. Now many of you are doing that already, I know you are, you were, you were telling me about it last night and well done. But the reality of that, if you think about it, with things like containers, which I'll talk about in just a second coming, and serverless computing, we need to get this what some people call the CD and release stack automated. We need to be delivering production-esque environments in development for testing so that we can assure that when we go to production, we are actually delivering on the same environment that we are uh, going to be testing on. It improves quality because DevOps is not just a merging of development and operations. It's things like DevSecOps, it's about bringing uh, performance testing left. It's about doing all these things and getting into a continuous process of automation. Now, one of the other aspects I can share with you since January this year is we are seeing a real shift in terms of containers. The word Docker is synonymous with containers. And since January this year, we've seen organizations actually lift and shift workloads by popping them into containers and looking at things like cloud providers to deploy on. That's one of those interesting uh, things that we've seen. Now, whenever I talk about containers, I think about microservices and re-architecting my applications and, and having APIs integrated everywhere and it's all wonderful and sweet and the world is great. But the reality of it is that you've got this huge investment in existing applications and services that you've already got, that you've already been using, that you've already got in production and they're not going away just yet. One of the things about containers is that many of you have applications today that are probably ready to move on. They're probably ready to transition into the next whatever they're going to look like. And the other thing we're seeing with containers is we are actually seeing more and more organizations look at actually developing code in, inside the business. This is called low code or no code or you might even call it citizen developers. And we're absolutely starting to see this today. And many of them are now deploying in new systems like containers. Now as you go forward with containers, my colleague Dave Bartoletti describes the container landscape as exactly where cloud was six or seven years ago. To do anything in the container environment, you need to mix and merge multiple parts together. You need to drive your ecosystem together and you need to understand are you going to use a container as a service, a platform as a service, or are you going to build something natively on something like maybe a Kubernetes? Now the reality of this is, and you look at this, you've got open source solutions and you've also got uh, paid solutions. 
One of the things here we've actually talked about is where Chef is going to play in this situation as well, with Habitat. So if you look at this situation today, you've got some interesting decisions to make as you drive forward with containers, how you're going to integrate and pull it all together. But the first thing I would share with you is don't put your head in the sand and don't ignore it because the reality of it is the containers are coming. So where are we? Well, whether you're doing containers, cloud, on-premise, it doesn't really matter. One of the things I want to encourage each of you to do is look at that automation pipeline. We did a survey using CALMS, which is one of the frameworks that uh, people use for uh, measuring DevOps and understanding the attributes of DevOps, things like culture, automation, lean methodologies, management and measurement, sourcing, and uh, so on, and sharing, of course. And if you look at one of the attributes of this, continuous automation across that pipeline is your opportunity. So we scored how people were doing in a maturity uh, model of uh, CALMS. And I'm unfortunately going to share with you that automation is severely behind every other metric. Now, I know if I, sh uh, I did the same review with this audience, I would say that you're all much higher in terms of automation. The fact that you're even here tells me that you're looking at it. But the reality of it is that is your, your opportunity to look at that pipeline, how you're going to automate it, how you're going to drive it, how you're going to deliver a consistent automated platform to your organization so that developers can develop, testers can test, QA folks can QA, and operations can deploy and look at more higher level, higher order things such as delivering great environments that can scale effectively and look at new technology. Now I shared earlier today that DevOps has really reached mainstream. I call it escape velocity. And one of the things about escape velocity is I don't have to actually explain to everybody what DevOps is anymore. I can actually have a discussion with the CIO and they'll say, yeah, I've heard DevOps. That's my Dev and Ops team working together and putting them into product teams. When I go to most of the organizations, I don't see that yet, but at least they're talking about it. But the reality is, where is it going in the future? Well, I want to share with you a new term, a term coined by uh, ING Bank, which you may have heard of earlier today, called Biz DevOps, where I am actually seeing organizations do development within the business. They're actually pushing code within the business. And you better have, from an operations perspective, your pipeline totally automated, totally efficient, totally effective, so you can take those pushes, run them through the testing environment, run them through the, the QA and staging, and deploy them directly to production. So Biz DevOps is about the business actually writing their own applications, and we're seeing that more and more across the globe. Now, also, if you look at this thing, one of the things I'll tell you there is that organizations are really driving DevOps forward. You know, one of the things that uh, I can tell you is who calls me, and the people who are calling me is fundamentally changing. It's not developers and ops so much anymore. You guys are doing the fundamental basics, but if you do want to have an inquiry with me, do that. But the reality of it is we are now seeing enterprise architects want to know how they can actually rationalize their tool chain. Because one of the problems you will face in your organization as you look at DevOps going uh, organizational-wide is you will have multiple tools, multiple tool sets, and multiple components, and with open source, you'll see them changing on a regular basis. So, if you can only remember one message from this session, one of the things I'll share with you. DevOps is now mainstream, but the reality of it is, if you focus on automation and continuously automating, it is not only critical to success, it will help you succeed. Because the objective of DevOps is to drive our business transformation, is to drive the way we do business forward. It's to deliver that business velocity that your business wants. Because as we go forward, we are the drivers of differentiation, business capability, and business services that our business is going to change on a more regular basis. So with that said, enjoy the event. It's been great talking to you. And I look forward to seeing many of you in the hallway as we go forward. Thanks for having me.